let's call upon the, the Lord to build his kingdom in this beautiful country, in this beautiful place, and in this beautiful suburb. Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land, set your church on fire. When this nation die, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here. We pray, set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. God another clap offering. We deserve all the glory, all the honors, and all the praise. Father, we thank you. We stand here, God, and we say that you are an amazing God. 
Thank you for being true to who you are. Thank you, Father God, that your word says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, today, I worship to you, Father. May you smile upon us this morning. Holy Spirit, come in. Take over us. Be the agenda of God this morning to each and every one that walks in this place. As we stand in praise, O oh God, we submit all our prayer requests to you. Father God, there are everyone of C3 Burwood, whoever wrote this, Father, they have needs, Father, wants, Father. We have some people as well, Father, that are not well this morning or away or is going through a rough time. Father, I, us as a church, we stand on the grounds of your word that you say that everything we ask for in the name of Jesus, and we believe it will come to pass. Father, we want to give you glory. Can we give God a clap offering for answering to these prayers? Thank you, God, for this morning. You are worthy, you are mighty, and you are so great. In Jesus' name we praise. And everybody say, amen and amen. Good morning again. Say hello to one person next to you. We've got some visitors here. Make them feel at home. Um, beautiful Victor and, and Larissa here with us today. Um, say hello to them. Okay, we're going to Act 20, verses 35. Um, okay. Okay, let's read. Um, I consider my life worth, okay, 20 verses 35. Okay, yeah, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So our tithe message this morning is that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Um, our church here, we have done a lot of giving. And thanks to you that make it possible, um, we help ICM. And, and it's an agency, a welfare agency that help people in the Philippines um, um, getting to um, a business to, to support their families. And thank you guys. Can we give a clap to you guys for doing that? And um, not only that, we helped the, the school in India um, where Dr. Marina um, um, built this school. And, and your donation and the tithe and, and offering that comes in here, we give a portion of that as well, even when you put it down as um, giving to them. So can we give a clap for that? Marina and then uh, getting that help. Um, we do help the, the local um, the local um, um, agency, like not long ago, we helped the community center at uh, Burwood and we give donations to help those who are in need. And this is all the, the tithe and this is all the offering that comes in. And, and even if it goes to um, um, uh, donations. Um, the other thing that our church has been doing is um, every Christmas we help family in needs in um, Burwood local uh, a public school. Can we give ourselves a hand there as well? And, and so why am I saying this is because um, just as God has blessed us abundantly, we are called to bless others through our tithes and offerings. As we give, we enable our church to provide support and resources to individuals, communities, and welfare groups. Like ACM, well, we'll just say that this community is facing various challenges. Let your giving reflect God's love and grace in your life. Because as we feel so blessed, it's our response. We want to give. There's no business transaction with God. We're not giving because God goes, I want this. We give because we feel so blessed. Break, come back because God give back. But rather than thinking like that, it comes from our heart to give. And um, one thing that I remember not long ago, there was a guy from the community. It doesn't belong to this community. And this guy was a student and um, called Pastor Phil. Oh, yeah, uh, Pastor Joel. Sorry, Pastor Phil. Pastor Joel. <clears throat> and he called Pastor Joel that he's falling in hard times. He was a student from overseas. And he's falling in hard times. And um, he need help because he can't pay his rent. So I have a chat with Pastor Joel um, um, at that, with that case. And my first thing that came in my mind said, is it a scam? <laughs> I said to Pastor Joel, are you sure it's not a scam? 
And graciously, because um, God has put so much grace in this man, he just know that this is a good thing that the church is doing. We are giving to people that are really in need. And that's where your tithe and your offering and what you're doing to this church is making this community enable us to do what we can do. So as Jesus said, because this is Jesus' words, it is better to give than to receive. The blessing of giving itself, it's a reward in your heart. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for blessing us so much. Thank you for encouraging our heart to respond back in blessing back. Father, we pray that this church, Caesary Bowood, will be a blessing to this community and other communities that need this kind of help, financial help and help um, that you wanted us to help people in need. Father, we give you glory, give you honours and give you praise, Father God, for all the jobs that are given to our family in C3 Burwood, all the finances you've given them, all the, the, the energy and the strength for them to work and all the, their bosses that's going to give them a great reward this year. Either it's a promotion or increasing their pay, Father. Father, we are grateful to you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. And everybody say, amen and amen. So um, there's three ways to give. There we are tightly up. There's a box out there if you want to give cash. Um, and... Um, and there's an online banking as well. Amen. So um, we're going to go to our, is it our commune? News. Okay, news, news. shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her, and will be the glory in the midst of her, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Let's share communion together, everybody, as we do. I, look, it's worthwhile, this moment in the service, um, every week we gather around the communion table to remember and recall Jesus, our Saviour, what he did and, uh, and how the world was changed. And my reflection this morning comes from, um, from that moment where he was on the cross and he cries out um, in Aramaic, I think, Eloi, Eloi, other words, which basically means... My God, my God, uh, why have you forsaken me? And it's this moment of strain and struggle. And a lot of us see that and go, oh, how did God abandon God? Because Jesus is God. And people go, how does that work? How did, why isn't God a loving God? Why did he abandon? And all these sort of questions. But actually, when we look at that and you look closely, Jesus wasn't just crying out his own pain and suffering. He was pointing to something, to anybody who heard, who knew he was pointing to something. He was pointing to a psalm which was well known by all of those people that were listening. And the psalm is Psalm 22. And the Psalm 22 starts like this. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? You see how he's pointing to that. And if you read the next 20 verses of Psalm 22, you're going to find a very sad and full of pain and anxiety story of how God and how I'm struck, there are people chasing me, I'm beaten down and I'm destroyed and hurt and harmed. But if you keep reading, at the end of verse 22, he cries out this, or 21, let's start there. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild, 
oxen. He's talking about, I'm just at my worst. And the second half of verse 21 is a beautiful three words. You answered me. Might be at the start of 22 on that version. You answered me. Can I keep reading from 22? I will proclaim your name to the brothers and sisters. I will praise you in the assembly. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. All you descendants of Israel, revere him. For he has not despised or abhorred the torment of the oppressed. He did not hide his face from him, but listened when he cried to him for help. Verse 25, I will give praise in the great assembly because of you. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear you. The humble will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. He turned this moment of pain into a moment of praise. But then the finish is what you and I need to grasp. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules the nations. All who prosper on earth will eat and bow down. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him, even the one who cannot preserve his life. Their descendants will serve him. The next generation will be told about the Lord. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people yet to be born, which is us. They will declare what he has done. Every time we share communion, we declare what he has done. We declare that moment that he was on the cross and he cried out the start of this psalm, but wants us to understand that that's just the start. We're we're at the finish and our children will be at the finish. And their children will be at the finish. And for generations to come, we will all be at the finish because of what he did on the cross. So this is our moment to recall that moment. And that we were invited in as people generations later. So Jesus, today we we take a moment to see you on the cross, to see your arms stretched wide and to hear your voice. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But God, we read on. We know that you died. We know that you were buried. But we also know that you rose again. Not only did you rise again, but you ascended to the right hand of the Father to rule. King, not just of that time, but of all generations, not just of that place, but to all the world. So when we share communion, we remember the body and the blood that it took you in order for us to walk into this. So we thank you, Jesus. Amen. You guys, uh, you join us for uh, either gluten-free or gluten-filled communion and some non-alcoholic wine. <laughs> If you'd like to stay at your chairs, just put your hand up and one of the team will come to you with one of your at your chair versions. Could I please get everyone to stand up? Desire is
no hesitation in your love and affection. It's the sweetest of all. Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new.
to us. We are desperate for your help, oh God. Help us, Father. Put us back into your perspective, oh God. Speak to us, oh God. Speak to us, oh God. You are worthy, God. You are mighty, God. You are great, oh God. You are amazing, oh God. Hallelujah. I am to follow your direction. Help us, God, to sit in your presence. Meditate in what you're trying to say. Father, as we worship you this morning, we submit, Father God, each and every human that you have brought in C3 Burwood, your children. Father, those who are not here this morning, we stand in awe, Father, in your presence and submit them to you. Like how you asked Moses to come up to the mountain. Right now, we're walking up to the mountain. We submit each and every one of our family members to you that are not here today, oh God. We pray, Father, that you breathe wisdom, you breathe courage, you breathe healing. You breathe so much of what you want to breathe into them. Father, we stand, Father, in your heart. We ask, Lord, that you help each and every one that's going through any situation. It could be financially. It could be emotionally. It could be spiritually. It could be physically, oh God. Right now, we stand before you. And we say, Father God, have your way. Do what only you can, like the song we just worshipped to you this morning. Father, today we want to say all honor. Can we give God a one clap offering? One all honor, all glory. Oh, keep on clapping. Oh, praise to you, O oh God. Because your word says, Father God, clap your hands, all you people, and praise his name. Because in your praise, things break. In your praise, things change. In your praise, things come to life. In your praise, things come to pass for your life. Father, we stand. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. In everything, oh God, there is none, Father God, like you. Let us not be the one, Father God. Help us, Father, to less of us and more of you, oh God. In 2024, we give you all the glory, all the honors, and all the praise. 
give him one more clap offering as we finish. Give him praise. Open up your heart and your mind to him. Thank you, God. Father, we bow before you. We're not performing, oh God. We're worshiping you. Our posture of worship is before you, God, this morning. Because you are holy. You are our God. And we honor you, God, with everything. We honor you, God. Help us to put you first so that we can become more like you. So that we can be courageous like you and generous like you and forgiving like you and loving like you. Father, bless this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way. This is our worship to you. May your name be highly exalted. In the name of Jesus, we worship and everybody say, Amen and Amen. 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 You can take a seat. We call Pastor Pastor Joel. Bring the word of God. Thank you. Okay, before we get into today, I, I, uh, we're in worship now. Um, I believe God gave me a picture for some people in the room, and so I don't know if it's you, but it might be you, and it might not be you, and that's okay. So um, Moses, when, um, you know Moses, everyone knows Moses, right? The parting of the Red Sea, the Ten Commandments, you've all seen the Charlton Heston films, well, those of you with my age and older, those that, that are younger, maybe you haven't, but I think they're a pretty famous story, right? Ten Commandments and, and Moses and all the miracles, the seven pl- or ten plagues, whatever it was. So, I don't know, lost count. <laughs> I wouldn't want to have lived through it, let's put it that way. Um, but anyway, Moses was uh, born to Israelite parents and all of those children were supposed to be killed. In fact, they were meant to be thrown into the Nile River. Moses was thrown into the Nile River, but he was thrown in a basket. He was saved. So even though his mom or whoever were caring for him might have walked up to him one day and said, hey, Moses, I mean, Moses' mom, did you throw your son in the water like you're supposed to? And she could have said yes. She wouldn't have lied. Interesting thought, isn't it? So then he gets rescued by Pharaoh's, um, Pharaoh's daughter, raised in the, uh, raised in the, um, in the palace, Pharaoh's palace, the wealthiest king in all the land. He was raised in, in that way. And the Bible talks about 40 years he was raised there, or roughly anyway. When he was around 40, he kind of knew that he was an Israelite. And he looked over and he saw some of his Israelite friends being mistreated. So he jumps in. And he kind of fights with the, these and kills the soldier, the, the Egyptian soldier that was mistreating his, uh, his fellow Israelites. And then the Israelites turned back and said, who made you our ruler that can do this? Now you've made things worse for us. So not only did he have no friends amongst Israel, but he'd also now killed an Egyptian soldier, which means that he was in trouble. So he fled. He ran away. He ran, ran miles away, miles and miles and miles away to seek safety. Eventually found safety and found a home to live in. And when he was living in that home, he, uh, you know, he started a new life, a life out as a shepherd, raising sheep, found a wife, had some children, was taken into Jethro's home, became his father-in-law. But then, about 40 years later, the Bible tells us, 40 in the Bible is always, always refers to wilderness, by the way. It always refers to it always refers to a testing time in the wilderness. If you see the word four, the number 40 in the Bible, think testing time. He had two, poor old Moses, but he would have another one yet. So Moses, he uh, was walking along doing his shepherd thing, and then there's this burning bush. The burning bush is on fire. And he's like, I will go and see this curious thing. This is what the Bible says. I mean, I don't know. But, so he walks over, and he checks it out, and... There he is looking at this fire which never goes out and, and suddenly he hears the voice of the Lord crying out from that fiery bush. 
he hears the voice of God saying, I've called you. You're my, you're my called one. I need you to lead Israel. And he's like, I can't speak. I don't know how to do that sort of stuff. Anyway, the point I want to get to here is this picture which I have for us today is that God led me to an image. And it was an image of a glow stick. You won't find that in the Bible. <laughs> So I had to connect it to a Bible story somehow, right? You know, test the word. Glow stick. So a glow stick at night does absolutely nothing to help you see until it is broken. Until you grab it by the sides and give it a good crack. It's a satisfying sound, but I bet you if I was the glow stick, I wouldn't really enjoy it very much. Crack, crack, crack. And then slowly the light begins to shine. And, and that's what happened with Moses. God had to break him a couple of times. But we'll read later when he went up to the, to, to the presence of God, he came back shining. He came back radiant. And it may be you today that perhaps you feel that you're going through a breaking or a cracking. It may be today that you feel like some parts of your life and maybe all the parts of your life are not working very well. You feel like perhaps you're just under some pressure. You're being bent in a direction you don't want to go in and you're feeling the cracks. You're feeling the breaks. But I want to encourage you today that those cracks and those breaks lead to light. They lead to light in dark places. And I believe that some of you today, some people here today are experiencing the breaking, but I want you to start fixing your eyes on the light which is to come. If that's you, I want you to take that thought. I want you to hold it to your chest. I want you to pray with me. God, today, I know the breaking I'm going through. It may be relational, it may be family. You, you know the breaking. You know that feeling. You know what's happening. Just picture it in your mind, all the breaking, the things that you can feel like are breaking on your life. And it maybe still feels like you're in a dark place. But I want you to open your heart at this moment and say, God, turn that breaking into glowing. Turn that breaking into light. Turn that breaking, God, into something that shines, not just for my benefit, but for all those around. Help me see the light to come. In the name of Jesus. I think that's a word for some people, and I don't know who you are. But I might be wrong. I'm not perfect. You're all very quiet. Is that because you're agreeing with me that I'm not perfect? Or is there, is there more to what's going on here, you know? Today's um, the start of our vision month. And that's cool. But before we get on to it, prayer meeting this Tuesday. We have a prayer meeting this Tuesday night, 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be, when we do our prayer meetings, it's also prayer and worship. We sing together. We ask for God's leading um, we don't just sort of sit around the table and take turns praying for certain things, one, two, three, four, and then we sort of tick that box and then we're done. It's, it's a really actually, it's a time for us to listen to God and speak with God and be a part, sort of connect ourselves with the Spirit and actually be walking in line with the Spirit. Really important time of the month for us. So this Tuesday night, our first one for the year. So make sure you're here. Come along. We'll turn the air conditioner on. It'll be nice and cool. Turn the lights on. You'll be able to see. <laughs> or off if you'd rather. This Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Vision, vision month, vision month. Did you like seeing uh, Pastor Nick and Jackie Lacerdo's face up there? They're great friends of ours. We are really looking forward to seeing them come here in a few weeks' time. In fact, this whole vision month I'm really excited about, looking forward to. Today, today I want to tell the story of where we are. And I want to hint at where we're going. And uh, next week I want to talk about more about where we're going. Then the week after that, hopefully Carl's legs are better. But Anna and Carl, I've got a message, God is able. It's the key scripture that we're looking at. That's where that phrase comes from in Ephesians chapter 
two or three. My memory's not great when I'm standing here. Or anywhere, for that matter. Uh, <laughs> but So that's God is able. So Anna and Carl will be leading that one and preaching that one. I'm looking forward to that. Then... The week after that, Nick and Jackie will come in. And they are, they, they are wonderful, loving, community-driven people. I know you're going to love those guys. Then the week after that, we'll be launching into our year full and proper with a great big launch service, um, looking at about our building. We know that we need to be moving. So we're going to be start talking about the new move that we, that we can only see as a vision at this point. You know, there are options and possibilities, but we're not right. We're not there yet, but we want to need, need to be there. We want to get there. And then after that will be a team lunch. So if you're someone who is part of the team already, meaning you serve in a team or, you, or you're part of the music team, doesn't matter, come to that. But if you'd like to be a part of the team, come to that, even if you're not. We want to keep that as a big, nice, wide open team lunch. So that's all the way till the first week of March. So Vision Month, I'm pretty happy about it. But let's start with telling the story. It's great that we have Pastor Phil and Debbie here because I'm getting these first parts of the story from the book that you put together, which is our church story. So if I get it wrong, it's really your fault because I'm just, I wasn't here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Correct me if I get it wrong. I want to know. All right. So C3 Bowie this year will be a 40-year-old church, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That's good. What do you mean, kind of? Well, I'll get to the story. But 40 years ago, in April, um, April 25th is the date that we have, that I had in that book that you put together. 1984. Where were you, Justin, in 1984? <laughs> you were a dream, a twinkle in your parents' eye. <laughs> I'll tell you where I was. I was uh, in grade two. At Mandurang Public School in Victoria, just outside Bendigo, I'd probably just come away from patting my goats, <laughs> rode my bike to school, kangaroos along the way, true story, they were always there, through the bush, the, these, the guy, we actually went through somebody's property to get to my school because they, they knew that if we rode along the roads, it was a long way around and we were only little. So what he did, this guy on his property, is he got out, he would, every, he would regularly do it, get out on his mower and he'd mowed the path for us. How cool is that? There was a few of us on my street. I mean, we call it a street. I mean, you could see the houses from one, you know, but they were a bit away. So when I was in, years, in those days, 1984, that's where I was doing. But anyway, it was started as a church called Ecumenical Christian Light Fellowship by Pastor Gordon Gibbs. You don't know who he is. He does appear in Google, so just do a search and you'll find him. Good story, very interesting fellow. Like he, he, uh, he was uh, one of the first mega church leaders in, in Sydney, out Western Sydney, and he was also he travelled all across Australia, just following the Lord's leading. And then, and then when he was here, that was when he started a travelling healing ministry. People would go to see him preach, and then at the end they they'd lay hands on him and pray, and, and uh, not him on others and and they'd receive healing. Very, very cool time in the history of church. So this was set up originally as a ministry to charismatic Christians of all denominations. That's what it says in your book. It wasn't yet technically a church. It was more of a gathering of people who came from other churches around to pray for this healing ministry. But that was 40 years ago. And I want to say that's our divine foundation. Important to recognize our divine foundations. We all have a divine foundation. I was born to Lynn and Ted Reed, who raised me in, uh, first of all, Mandurang, no, Emu Creek Anglican Church. You know where Emu Creek is, right? Just outside Mandurang. <laughs> Good name for a church, isn't it? I think there was about 12 of us in that church. It was a great little community. I remember growing up, there are a lot of memories. Then we moved to Evans Head Presbyterian Church when we moved to the North Coast, and then I went. So these are my divine foundations. And, you know, some of you may not have been raised in a church. In fact, many of you have no church story until today, maybe. Maybe today is your first church story. Maybe last year was your first church story. But it doesn't matter because God is still laying divine foundations, even if it's not a church family that you were raised in. 
I mean, how many stories? And I could ask you all about your story of growing up and how those moments have led to where you are today. In fact, it's a reality because you are here today. So they were formed part of it, and I like to call that divine foundations. So the divine foundations of this church was that ministry. And while I wasn't here then, this gathering holds true to some of those divine foundations. We are still open to all denominations, though now we'd say open to everyone. Doors wide open, still very open. We're still charismatic, although today we'd say spirit-powered, spirit-filled. Same meaning. Always listening to the Spirit's leading. We are still a fellowship of light, though now we'd say we're deeply committed to a community of love. That is a community that decides and acts. Have you heard me say this before? Maybe you have. Decides, then acts on that decision to benefit others at our own cost. That's our definition of love, which I will keep reminding us of. To start with a decision, it's followed with an action, and that action benefits others at my own cost. This is our definition of love here. So in October of 1985, Pastor Phil and Debbie, Debbie came on board to be pastors of this growing Tuesday fellowship. Let's give them a hand. Woo! 39. Years ago, well, 38 and a half. <laughs> That's cool. 38 and years, 38 and a half years, and Pastor Debbie and Phil are still here. I'm so glad you came today. <laughs> I'm glad you come every time you come, but I'm just saying I'm so glad you're here today because I can, we can cheer you on and, and remind you know, everybody. You are legends of our C3 church here. Always will be. Never won't be. So in October of 1985, that's what happened. Wasn't yet a church, though. Starting to look a bit more like one, though. Then in 1990, according to the book that I've got over there, Burwood Christian Centre finally became a church. 1990, somewhere through there. Pastor Phil and Debbie Sammons, the church was established in, here, in there, um, and, and, and it began as a church. So we'll celebrate 1990 down the track. We'll, we'll look forward to, what year are we in? 2020, 2030. <laughs> That'll be our 40th year as a church. But I want you to keep carrying this idea, yeah, but we're already 40. <laughs> Just we won't tell anybody. Maybe it was the long, a long conception, a long pregnancy. 1997, C3, uh, but this church became a C3 church. Before 1997, a part of other movements or independent, but joined C3 and we've been C3 now for 25 years. That's cool because C3 is only 40 years old as a whole movement, 41 or two. So we were one of the early ones. So those years, those years really, for the next 30 years, I'm going to call them our establishing years. So divine foundations, we talked about our next phase were the establishing years. Loads of people found Christ over those 30 years that came after that. Still leading people to Christ, leading people into a, full, into a full relationship with Jesus, helping people flourish, love, acceptance, forgiveness, key words as this church was growing through those 30 years. We are still leading people to Christ. That's still at our heart. We still find our greatest joy in celebrating when somebody finds him. Oh, we could talk about a great song. We could talk about a great preach. We could talk about a great... Party. We can talk about all kinds of good things, but the thing that I love and we love the most is the moment a person says yes to Jesus. There's nothing better. Actually, I can tell you the first time that ever happened for me, I was speaking and, and um, I'm like a youth group, I think it was, and I'm like, does anyone want to follow Jesus today? I said it so timidly, so fearfully. Does anyone want to follow Jesus? And I remember one person putting their hand up. I could not sleep for days. I just kept thinking of that moment that that young man put his hand in the air and said, yes, I want to receive Jesus. Best moment of my preaching life. I will never forget it. Loads of people were loved and welcomed and grown in the faith, given opportunities to grow and serve. And even many were sent 
many were sent. We started churches in India. This is we. I talk about it like I'm there. I wasn't there yet. <laughs> but this church started churches in India. People would go on from here to become pastors of other churches, significant pastors. This church was a place where people were loved and grown and sent from. We are still a church that loves and grows and sends people. People are often surprised to hear that I hold people very loosely. I don't want, I mean, I never want anyone to leave because I love you guys, right? You know? But, you know, it's it's dysfunctional, right? If I, like, hold on to my children till they're 45. (laughs) There's something dysfunctional about that, right? I want my children to go on and flourish and, and and build and become a part of the community and all kinds of things of their own and, And I can't do that if I hold tight. And I see the same with all of everybody as a part of this church. If I hold you too tight, you can't go and be what God's called you to be. However, I don't want you to leave, so stay. (laughs) Because maybe God wants you here. Probably does. Sorry. So we are still a loving, growing, sending church. It's been in the heart of this church for years and never will stop being that. But then 2020 came along. 2020 was a year that most of us, in fact, none of us will forget. Maybe a couple of us, maybe Isla will forget it because she was never around for it. (laughs) She'll learn it from the history books, that's right. But it was especially a big year for us, for my family and I. It was especially a big year for Rusty and Lily and especially a big year for the Phelan family. A very big year for Joe and Parky, for Carmen and John. Because we all came from where we were to join here. That year was a big I mean, did anybody else come in 2020? Were you guys 2020? 2021. Was anyone 2020? You came in 2020? Yeah. Anybody else? I can't remember if anybody else did. Tough year. Tough, tough year. Do you know what? I love telling this story. So we arrived at C3 Burwood the first week of March 2020. So the first week of March this year will be our four-year anniversary. Yay. So um, it took us. Like, we were so excited. We came. There was like 50-something in the service. And we're like, yeah, we can work with this. It's going to be great. And everyone was like hugging. And it was so fantastic. The next week, we only had about 35. That's okay. (laughs) The next week, we had 10. And we didn't even bother with the week after that. Of course, it wasn't our fault. (laughs) Well, maybe it was a little bit our fault, but it wasn't completely our fault. (laughs) Still, I feel like something ended for C3B Burwood in 2020. I don't know about you, but I feel like something ended. And I don't feel like everything ended. I don't, like I said, our divine foundations and our established heart remain the same. But something did end. Well, first of all, church ended for three months. And during that time, we had to figure out how to do church online. We had to work out what the phone did. We had to, everyone started using a thing called Zoom. Nobody knew what Zoom was. But then suddenly everyone knew what Zoom was. It's funny how there was this little war that went on for about three weeks. We had, um, I think, uh, uh, there was a few anyway. Microsoft Teams, I think it's still floating around. There was, um, can anyone remember the other ones? There was, uh, what's, sorry? TeamSpeak, yeah, what was that? Skype, what happened to Skype? Everyone knew Skype, but now where's Skype going, right? Zoom, Zoom. (laughs) Killed it, that's right. So all these sort of were vying, but somehow Zoom shot to, the, shot to the top, and everyone knows Zoom now. Some people stayed, some people moved on, and that was okay. Even some new people joined us during those years, those uh, people that I mentioned. This sort of went on for almost two years, didn't it? You remember, it was like we were doing church, and then we were doing church with masks, and we were doing church with social distancing, then we were doing church with no social distancing. We were asking, can you hug? We were doing foot high fives. We were doing elbows. Um, we were like going from, so like, I'm talking to honey, like it's so, we're too, are we too close? Oh, can we, is that better? <laughs> you know, we, we're all doing this. We're trying to open windows. You can't open any of the windows in here. But you're trying to, every, you know, we're like had seating counts on the door, 88 people, 33 people. Oh, man. I transformed my garage into a studio, a 
very cheap and nasty studio. <laughs> Dusty. Anyway. But October 21 really is where we, 2021 is where we really feel like our start really was. I often think of this as our day one, our beginning, the moment that we emerged from the lockdown cocoon and the butterfly of C3 Burwood was stretching its wings, beginning to. That same month, October 21, God began to speak to me. I believe God gave me a very, like I would call it a quickened part of scripture um, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Hebrew hermeneutic. Do you like that? Use that one in a sentence, I dare you. The Hebrew hermeneutic. So Hebrew, we know that you can work that one out, people from Israel. Right, hermeneutic means how you understand something. All right? Isn't it great to learn good words? Sometimes that's a theological word, but it's a good word. So the Hebrew way of thinking, a way of learning and understanding things, they have all these different ways of unpacking the scriptures, unpacking the word of God. But then there's got this last one, which they call sod. I think it's a Hebrew word. So, and that last one is like, just somehow God just gives you divine understanding. We can't explain it. We can't teach it. Just somehow God gives divine understanding. And so when I was reading this scripture, I believe God gave me a divine understanding. In scripture, in Zechariah 2, 4, and if you've been here for the last three years, you know this scripture pretty well. Well, you'll have heard it anyway. It, with the context here is that Zechariah and, and other people have left Babylon. They've arrived back in the promised land and they're rebuilding. They're putting the walls of the city back up. They're rebuilding the temple. An angel appeared in a vision to Zechariah and the, the angel is talking to another person in the dream, not him, but he says this, run. That's a great start. It was up there on the screen before. Run. Speak to this young man saying, we shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of people and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her and I will be the glory in her midst. When I read this back in October of 2021, God showed me the picture of the future, the vision where he's calling us to be and to grow towards. So then I did some research. Do you know there are 300,000 people living, and I've said this before, so if you've been around, you've heard these numbers, in the inner west of Sydney. 300,000 people in the inner west of Sydney. Do you know there's another 600,000, 700,000 people living in southwest Sydney, if you draw a big circle that way. Do you know how many C3 churches there are in that whole area? Hmm? <laughs> Us, we're it. Now, there are other churches. I have no problem with other churches. In fact, we pray for other churches. We hope other churches will grow. We want to see other churches flourish, especially if they're churches that talk about Jesus. Maybe only if they're churches that talk about Jesus. <laughs> so the statistics and the Australian statistics say 10%, or it's actually a little less than that, but 10% of the population are in church on any given Sunday. So that tells me if we add our area and Sydney Southwest together, there are 900,000 people. And we are the one church, the one C3 church, ready to reach them. Nine, that's a lot of people. 900,000 people. At the beginning of 2022, we had 54 members. We had about 35 people every given Sunday. In fact, if we had 40, we were like, yeah, what a huge party was. Remember those days, those that were around then? It seemed, and it still seems, like a pretty big ask for 40, 54 people, with maybe about 100 now, to reach 900,000. And yet, in these verses from Zechariah, God has shown us. He has quickened this word for this ancient Israel people, but made it a word for us today, that this is our call. God is calling us, and I'm going to go through the parts of it. Are you ready? The first one, towns without walls. That's, uh, that's, that's 
So some versions, if you've got an NIV or if you've got a Holman or if you've got very most of the common ones will just say a city without walls. But technically, the language is multiple there. Be like towns uh, without walls. We see that as multiple places. So if there are 900,000 people for us to reach all across inner, inner West Sydney, Southwest Sydney, God is called, God's going to need us to be bigger than just one church here in Burwood. It's very hard for us to reach people in Hurstville. It's a long way to come. So I can see right now easily 10 new locations for churches in this area, Sydney's inner west and southwest. I'm thinking Marrickville, Bankstown, Hurstville, Auburn, Newtown, Campsie, Chester Hill. Why not? Leichhardt, Fairfield, Liverpool. No C3 churches in there at all. No, as I said to you, there are other churches who do great things. But this is our church. This is our tribe, and we want our church because we know our church is gospel-centered. We know our church is Jesus-centered. We know our church is spirit-filled. We know our church um, is, is somehow sacramentally God is here with us. You like that? Mysteriously, God is here with us. We know this. And that's why we believe in what we're doing. We want to go out into our world and see churches that will carry our heart, churches without walls where everyone is welcome and the the doors are wide open. I want you to catch this idea. We're not building one church. In fact, many times, many of you will have heard me say, I don't want to be a big church. I want to be lots of community churches where people know each other's name, where people love one another, where people care for one another individually, not as a number or as a category, but as an individual who they know and love. That's the picture I see. You know, the second part of that scripture says multitudes of people. People, the fact that there are 900,000 people not yet in church tells me that they are truly are multitudes of people ready to make their way into these churches. Last year in 2023, the theme idea was just that. Many nations will join themselves to the Lord on that day and they will become my people. Many will become one united new people. This is the picture we're seeing. The third thing in that scripture says multitudes of livestock. And that talks to me about provision. Livestock is all about provision. All this will take real tangible resources. And we've already seen tastes of how God is blessing us in the last couple of years. We've had miraculous provision um, with with things like our costing, the cost of church here got, you know, cut in by a third, like two thirds. Just in one moment, we saved something like $40,000 a year in one moment. Amazing. So not only have we seen cost reduction, but we've seen increase in, in giving. And giving that's coming from like all over. Yes, it's us and it's us working together, but somehow people are finding our vision, finding our hope and wanting to bless that who aren't even members of our church. Provision. We'll keep seeing these things happen as we keep our attention firmly on rebuilding and renewing the church that began and was renewed in 2021. God will be a wall of fire, the the scripture says. Protection. Make no mistake, if we continue this God-given vision of not just one church, but many churches without walls, he will draw, we will draw the attention of the enemies of the kingdom of God. People, institutions, spiritual powers, principalities, even our own wicked, sin, wicked sinful desires. If you want to know what I mean by wicked and sinful desires, just watch a couple of weeks ago or something like that. Psalm 1, anyway. The Psalm 1 message, really important to understand what wicked and sinful desires really are. Don't have time for that today, so go back and watch that. Hey, hey, increase our YouTube watchership. (laughs) Bump us up in all those searches. Just kidding, I don't care about any of that. (laughs) But part of us doesn't really want to fulfill that. Part of us wants to come and sit and be comfortable, right? But this is all going to make us uncomfortable. Growing, expanding, reaching, sending people is going to hurt. When we send down the track, we're going to send 50 people to Marrickville or 50 people to Bankstown to start a new congregation. That's going to hurt. We're going to miss some people we love. We've got to be ready for that. We can't resist that. 
This next part of that scripture says, and he will be the glory in our midst, his presence. He will be the very center of all that we do. He will be his glory and all that that means will be right here in the church. And so this is our picture that we've been going on since really the end of 2021. And we're going to keep going on this picture until we, still, until we see it flourish. We're going to keep planting the seeds in the garden until the garden comes to life. So to this year, though, we're going to narrow down to one scripture. I'm not, I'm not even going to preach it because that's next week. But here's the scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner person, the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes understanding, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, God is able. To him be glory in the church. By Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. As you and I pursue these things in 2024, he will be the glory within. To him will be glory in this church, not just for us, but for our children and their children and all the new people that will come and join us. Next week, we're going to dive into this more deeply, but for now, this picture, many places without walls, where many people can come where the God of abundance will provide, where he is our protection and our shield, where he is the glory within. I'm calling you and asking you to join with me. To be a part of this. To join with us in the renewal project. The Sydney Inner West, South West Inner, the renewal project. It's going to take a bit of commitment from all of us. Willingness to pray and pray hard that more and more people will find Christ here with us. A willingness to support through giving financially. We don't get money from anywhere except for people who just give it to us. There's no government support. There's no big denominational coffers or anything like that. It's just us. And I told you before, a few people that <laughs> love us still, you know, but from elsewhere. So we'll need some financial support to do it. We'll need people to put their hands to work. If you're not in a team yet, join a team. Welcoming at the door is as important as anything. If people are not feeling welcome at the door, they're not even going to listen to me. So don't think that I'm the most important person in the room. You guys at the door are. First impressions count a whole lot more than you realize. And it goes all the way to the hospitality team. Join that one if you want to be a part of things. The prayer team, we have people that pray every morning before the service. Like we can keep going on. I'm not interested in that right now, but I want to say to you, if you haven't joined a team, join one. Be a part of this picture. And keep in mind, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. If you're talking to people on the street who have lost their way with Jesus, invite them in. Hey, we're in a church that's going and got this idea. Come and join us. Be a part of it. I've got to say, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm not trying to big note myself. I've said you to a hundred times before. I don't want to be a big church guy. When we get too big, either I'm out of here or we're sending people out of here. All right? Oh God. Truly, we will send people. Or me. Maybe you'll send maybe you all send me. I don't know. <laughs> Joel, we really believe that God is saying to you, <laughs> you're not the yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's, can I just ask you to spend some time this month in particular praying into these things and asking God how you can be a part of it. And that, and that goes for you if you're visiting today for the first time, second time, third time, doesn't matter. Even if you've been here for 20 years, even if you've been here for 
38 and a half years. God's ready for you to be a part of his team in this grand project. So be a part of it with us. All right, Jesus, today we honour you. This is all about you. This is all about helping people find you. God, I, I for one, I pray, humble me, help me submit to your way. Help me to know your call. God, keep me on the narrow path. If you've got to break some things to make me come to light, God, break those things. God, that I might shine your light in the darkness. The heart is for the 900,000 people. The heart is for them. God, that they would know your love, they would grow into your call and even find themselves sent into the world just like you did with everybody. But for our part, God, I pray you'd open our eyes and hearts and minds to be willing to do what you call us to do, to be willing to be a part of the picture you want us to paint, the song you want us to sing dance you want us to dance the run you want us to run I pray for everyone here today those even others that are away but that will hear this ah, stir in us stir in us stir again in us and again and again the call to reach your world with your gospel that moment we first followed you, stir it up. In the name of Jesus. Let's worship the Lord. Your kingdom come. 
Father, we submit everything that our senior pastor has put through today. Father, help all of us, Father, to follow and to help to bring this to life, Father God, continuously. Father, we pray for our prayer nights on Tuesday night. We pray that each and every one of the family of C3B that are free will come and just to bring your vibe in here, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for the music team, the hospitality team, those who are welcoming in the morning, and everyone that's here today that make this day possible. Most of all, Father God, we thank you for you, Holy Spirit, that has made this day amazing. We pray, Father God, for our fellowship after today in the kitchen and to end our week. And we ask all this in your powerful name, Lord Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen and Amen. So if you're a visitor today, there's a cappuccino waiting for you outside. And there's a hospitality team there. They're having a little light lunch for everyone. Stay and have fellowships so that we continue to enjoy one another. Amen. Amen. <laughs>